Ain't feeling good Like I should When in dark I walk around the neighborhood Feeling blessed Never stressed What's up, Pavlovs? Hi, Pavlovs. Welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to our channel. <laughs> Stop. Ah. Don't copy me. Mm -hmm. Anthony is mm -hmm. an idiot. Mm -hmm. Pavlov is a god. <laughs> Praise God, Pavlov. So, we just got back from my trip in Portland. We had a really fun trip, but we wanted to talk to you today about what it's like to travel with your dog on an airplane and how you can do that. <laughs> So for Alaska, check-in was really easy. Um, you have to submit your paperwork 48 hours before your flight. So I submitted it online. I got confirmation that PAV was good to go. Um, you didn't even need to go to the check-in counter because we got our boarding passes right away. Our flight's delayed. Our flight is delayed. Guam. He's scared of elevators or escalators. It's a very scary thing, you know? Like, he has paws, they're really small, it's loud, it's metal. And they make a notation on your boarding pass that you will be traveling with an animal. Um, and then going to TSA is pretty smooth. They even let you sometimes go to the shorter line because you have an emotional support animal, which is awesome. It's a pretty interesting process. I mean, we've gotten used to it, so um, I'm like really down with the routine. But Tram has to go through the metal detector, and they make you kind of take off all the leash and the harness and everything involved. You don't go through, through the 360 one. You go through like the stand, remember the old ones? Just the standard like boxed ones. Um, so you take off the leash, the harness, um, and then you grab your pet. So I just carry Pav because he's light enough to be carried. We walk through, you have to wait there because then they have to like do this wipey thing. I think it's like a bomb detection thing where they wipe your fingers, they put it through a machine. The woman said it took 12 seconds. Um, you wait to be cleared and then you're good to go. Yeah. Airlines even let you board early because it takes a little bit of time to walk your dog through. I hate boarding last um, on airplanes, especially with Pavlov because he'll like say hi to everybody. <laughs> you guys will see this in some of the clips. Like everybody wanted to say hi to him, everyone wanted to touch him. Oh Lord. It was nice to be able to board a little early with some extra time. So ask your airline ahead if you can board early. One other note if you're traveling with your dog is that luggage and carry-on space has to be shared with your dog. And so on our carry-on, I mean we have we it, we had our two carry-on luggages, we each had our own backpack, but then we had to make sure that we had Pavlov's food and his treats and the backpack and uh, his toys and everything kind of packed in there. And when Tram was going through security and Tram was handling Pavlov, walking through, navigating the scary spaces, I had, um, you'll see or maybe not, that I had um, both of our luggages, my backpack, Tram's backpack on the luggage. <laughs> Um, at 
time so that we can kind of navigate this space appropriately. And so it, it felt like going through like Disneyland at times or something kind of, just, it felt really crazy. Um, so just make sure that you allow a little bit of time and flexibility um, to go through the airport with your luggage and everything like that or try to get a little bit of help if you can. We usually get there about two hours early just to make sure we have ample enough time to check in, go through the gates, we don't have to run and rush, you know, we can take our time getting to our gate without stressing too much. Airports also usually have a pet relief area and we usually take Pavlov about 30 minutes before the flight and limit his water and food intake before then. This is one of the pet relief areas. It has a little bit of turf and a water hose and Pav usually goes pee right before our flight. As always, life tip, <laughs> just get there early. Pav is almost like an extra luggage, and a luggage that's even harder to control because he's like moving around and looking for schnackos in the airport. Overall, that's pretty much how we travel with Pav. Before we resume this video, I just wanted to talk about this pet safe walk along outdoor harness that we took along with the trip and we really liked. Um, it's an awesome harness. It comes in two colors, black and orange, and it's super comfy, easy to put on. It's padded, it does not restrict Pavlov's shoulders, and it has a secret pocket component where you can put your keys. So if you're going hiking, it's an awesome place to store your keys so it doesn't get lost. Another awesome part about it is that you can buckle your dog in into the seatbelt and you can also use the strap to lift him up. Um, it's super industrial looking and the buckle is secure and thick so you never have to worry about it deteriorating over time. So overall we're giving one of these away so stay tuned for later in the video to learn how you can enter this giveaway with Petsafe. It's an awesome harness! Giveaway! Yay! So enter! <laughs> Please enter. Please. So in order to enter the giveaway for the Pet Safe Walk Along Outdoor Harness, please put what color you want, your Instagram handle, and why you need this harness in the comment below. Make sure you're subscribed, and for some bonus entries, follow Pet Safe on Instagram. Yeah, we want y'all to win, okay? It's cool. It costs lots of money, and it's free. It's free. It's very free. It's free. Okay, it's so free. that's all you have to do. <laughs> So, you want to travel with your dog inside the cabin. What do you need to do? So there are two ways you can do this. One is based on the airline restrictions and this is based on the US airline, by the way. So check with your airline. This is the first way of how you do this. Your dog must usually weigh under 20 pounds and must be in a carrier that can fit under your seat. So. In order to do it this way, you have to check with your airline carrier to see what type of regulations they might have. And that can include getting a health certificate from your vet within 10 days of travel um, and vaccination records. So make sure you look that up. That is the first way and there is a breed and weight restriction on that. The mm. second way, in order to get your dog to fly in the cabin without the breeding weight restrictions, the second option would to be to have your dog certified as an emotional support animal. Each airline has their own policy on how to deal with emotional support animals coming on board. Before it used to be a much easier process and then people started to take advantage of it. People started to take emotional support animal ostriches or peacocks or horses or pigs because um, technically you can ESA anything. So now airlines are getting a little bit more strict in making you fill out their paperwork, which includes um, a letter from a vet, maybe some paperwork or a letter from a, a mental health professional. Um, but the actual paperwork and requirements vary from airline to airline, so it's important that you check with that particular airline before you fly out. So we flew with Alaska to get to Portland, and it was a short two hour flight. And the other form is filled out by you, saying that if your dog pees on the plane, bites anyone on the plane, that you are subject to have 
them check in as a pet and you have to pay for all of those fees and the cleaning fee. Um, and then the third form is filled out by your mental health professional and they certify that your pet is needed either on the plane or at your final travel destination for your mental health. Um, we have a lot of questions about people saying like, can they be in your lap? Um, usually not. They usually have to fit under the seat in front of you. So although they can be any weight and any size, the dog or your emotional support animal has to fit in the compartment in front of you where you put your carry-on luggage. Yes, emotional support animals ride for free. Um, when you, for the other option, you do have to pay, depending on how much the airline is. But that is typically how it works. He's supposed to fly on the floor, but sometimes the flight crew doesn't mind if he's in her lap, um, especially during takeoff and landing. Um, Having him in our lap has been helpful for flying and, and definitely eases with the anxiety or, or stress with that. It's just to repeat this evening on Alaska Airlines. We look forward to seeing you on a future Alaska Airlines flight. Have a wonderful stay here in Portland or wherever your travels may take you. Um, but for the most part, he lays on the floor and he's a good boy. He sleeps the entire time. Yeah, so we're really lucky um, that Pav is behaviorally a really good dog on the plane. I wouldn't recommend this if you know your dog is not a good flyer because you can be subject to getting kicked off your flight and buying a whole nother flight and then buying a seat or like a pet ticket for your dog or animal. So um, the airplane can be a really scary place, especially during takeoff and landing. Um, the airport can be a really scary place. A lot of luggages, lots of sounds, lots of unfamiliar smells and sights and people. Um, so yeah. If people hate airplanes and airports. You can only imagine how many, how much dogs do as well. But overall, that's pretty much how we travel with Pav. We hope you guys enjoyed this video and remember to enter the giveaway. We will see you in the next vlog. And remember to always... Great stuff, dogs!